How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today we're going to be going over a few of the techniques that you can use to remove the killer beehives in Don't Starve Together and single player games. I personally find that killer beehives are actually more intimidating in appearance than they are in actual functionality because to be honest the killer bees behave in the same manners that a regular bee would behave in aside from the fact that it automatically aggros onto the player based on uh, the relative distance to the hive. So in general, unless you absolutely have to remove the killer bees or you need the honeycombs within them, it's usually a good idea just to keep them around because they can especially make a good dumping grounds for bosses that you're not equipped at the moment to deal with. But if you run into a situation where you absolutely do have to remove them, what is the best way to go about doing it? Well, I think it really comes down to just dealing with them yourself. This means aggroing the nest and then attacking the bees that come out. This is actually a lot easier than you might think at first glance because you can actually get in one or two hits depending upon if you have like a walking cane or a road to be traveling on. Uh, you can get in one or two hits before being able to just dodge a step or two away. The bees will attack and then you just go in for another hit. So you can quite effectively kite an entire party of bees. It really doesn't matter how many bees are after you. You could have anywhere from six to 60, for example, and you would still be able to use this tactic without getting hit. You don't need armor to do this. Obviously, a weapon with you know, like a ham bat is recommended because it has pretty much unlimited durability and you're going to be killing a relatively high number of bees in a short amount of time. So not having to go cycle through weapons is a convenience, but is by no means a necessity. Similar with armor, like you could be wearing armor, you could be wearing a beekeeper hat, but it is not necessary if you're fairly competent at doing this. Now, one of the biggest problems that new players have with bees and when it comes to attacking them is the fact that they try to click to attack. This is one of the biggest mistakes that you can overcome early on and your game will get a lot easier for it. So instead of clicking to attack, rebind the key settings, the keystrokes for whatever it is that you feel comfortable using. I personally have the attack button mapped to my mouse. This is huge when it comes to bees because bees are small and when you have something so small that is relatively fast like that, it is very difficult to click on it to attack it and that is why most players fail when it comes to attacking bees. Once you actually learn how to press F or press space to attack things, enemies, automatically, the bees become a non-problem. They're just absolutely not a threat at all. Now, one of the things that can become a little bit compounding is if the killer beehives are in close proximity to one another, given the fact that they respawn killer bees within them every 20 seconds, that means that you have a relatively short amount of time to dispatch a large amount of bees before they keep respawning. And you can get stuck in this sort of loop where it keeps respawning bees and then you're not actually going to be able to eventually kill the hive. In cases like this, there are alternatives. And so I, would, I think it is actually a good idea to explore some of them instead. One of them is the lure plant. Now, the lure plant is an item that spawns during the growing seasons, and it can actually come in useful once you destroy it. So you destroy it, and you can plant it nearby to killer beehives, and once the plant starts to bloom, it will spawn all these little eye plants all over the place, and those plants are especially adept at capturing killer bees. So you can just run up close to the killer beehive, grab all the bees that aggro out of it, and then sort of uh, kite them around the lure plant eye, uh, eye plants themselves. And those eye plants will take care of them. Obviously, the drops from those bees will actually be consumed by the eye plant, but you can later kill the eye plant and retrieve the majority of those if that is uh, an important factor to take into consideration. So number, another number, number three, let's talk about pigs. Now, pigs can be recruited for meat, and they will sort of follow your command. So if you faint an attack at one of the beehives, the pigs that you have befriended will go ahead and target it as well. And this can allow you more flexibility in terms of like you could go ahead, aggro the bees, and then while they're after you, the pigs could actually be destroying the beehive. It's a little bit questionable. By and large, it's best if you can just get the pigs equipped with beekeepers hats because pigs will wear headgear and that will defend them from a lot of damage, keep them on the battlefield a lot longer, and you'll be able to more effectively deal with the killer bees because you have now what amounts to an army that is at your command and is helping you to dispatch the bees. It's distracting them, they're dealing damage, it's all around a good thing. If pigs don't work, wait until the autumn comes around and use Berger 
to actually destroy the hives. Now, Barrager is particularly effective at removing bees because of his area of effect attack. This is an attack that will kill all bees within a certain radius of him immediately upon initiation, which means that it doesn't matter whether there are 10 bees, 20 bees, 200 bees, he will just be able to just wipe them all dead in one swing of his paw. When it comes to actual beehives or wasp hives themselves, the real danger with using Barger to destroy them, because he will destroy them with his area of effect attack quite easily, uh, is that he will actually want to eat the contents of them. So you might actually lose honeycombs in the process. So if keeping the honeycombs around is an important issue for you, this is probably not the method to use. The last one, this is like a scorched earth policy that we're going to be talking about here, is using fire. If you have a fire staff or a fire dart, you can simply send it into the wasp hive and it will burn it down. Obviously, once you have the wasp hive burnt down, you're going to lose all of the drops from it. You're not going to get any honey. You're not going to get any honeycombs. There's a danger of the fire spreading and getting out of control. So, you know, keep all of those things in mind when deciding to go for this way. This is the scorched earth method, but if you don't have any other options open to you um, and you're feeling a bit desperate, this is definitely something that you could take into consideration. So that does it for me. These are the methods that I came up with after some researching and experimenting on my own with how to actually remove killer beehives in Don't Starve Together and Don't Starve Single Player. Obviously, these tactics would also apply to a large extent to regular beehives, so you can experiment and use them there as you see fit. If you have an alternative suggestion or method of dispatching beehives, let me know about it in the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.